Well, good morning and you're very welcome back to the channel. It is nearly Valentine's Day. <gasps> and so I thought you might enjoy a few ideas of ways to make lovely flowers using locally grown, no imported flowers here, uh, locally grown flowers for your Valentine. And if you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Please do subscribe, press the bell icon, and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks we give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee, or better still, join my club. 365 people have a lovely time there. Uh, the links to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. We talk on this channel about flower growing, flower arranging, small businesses, social media, uh, books. <laughs> and um, all kinds of things associated with running small lifestyle businesses and growing flowers for pleasure or for profit. Now, as you can see, I've got a lovely mix of flowers available here. Uh, Cornish, these are early cheer, early cheer Narcissi, my favorites. Lovely Cornish ranunculus from my friends at BJ Richards. Lovely, look at these hyacinths, they smell delicious. Tiny little snowdrops. You could have some of these from your garden. Cornish heather, great cut. And we'll do something fun with that. And from Lincolnshire, I have these amazing, beautiful white tulips. Then from my own garden, I have these gorgeous pussy willow. And it's still winter, but the grisolinia has a real sense of spring about it. And I love the formal silver of this brachyglottis. Now, if you're ordering roses, which have been imported from the other side of the world, you will be paying a massive premium for them. And because it's Valentine's Day. And they may not, they may, but they may not be beautifully scented and so on. So what I've done is I've chosen locally grown flowers not only because they're pretty but they have lovely scent and the most inexpensive way you can buy flowers to offer your valentine on the 14th of february is to go to your local flower shop and ask for british grown or locally grown flowers and they may go i can't help you in which case you go thank you very much i'll go elsewhere um because locally grown flowers won't cost, literally cost the earth. And what you could do if your budget is quite m modest, and I believe very strongly in keeping yeah. budgets modest on account of then you've got money left over to go on holiday or pay for your house or something. Don't spend money for the sake of it. If your Valentine is the good sort, they will not love you more because you spent a lot of money on them. They will love you more for the thought you put into the process. So once you've found some nice locally grown flowers, you could make up your simplest way of making an arrangement for them is to make a parcel. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you'll need for your simplest offering is a nice long piece of craft paper or any kind of wrapping paper, whatever suits your fancy. And you want to fold it over So it makes a rough point. This is going to be the, the, the point where the stems of the flowers are at this end. And this wider end is what's going to wrap around the flowers. Okay, stay there. I'm gonna move you down so you can see what I'm doing. Whoop. There we are. Right. So, you could very simply order or buy a few bunches of tulips, lay them on the patch, More expensive, more expensive, but really lovely, some ranunculus. 
and I'm being careful, hello, I'm being careful when I put them together that the heads are all at the same level-ish because then when the package is wrapped up and you look down at it, you'll see what it's going to look like. So here come shorter stemmed hyacinths. And again, I'm going to arrange these so that the heads of the hyacinths are sort of at a level with the heads of the tulips and the heads of the ranunculus. And let's have some narcissi. And again, going to put the heads of the narcissi so they're almost pretty much at the same level as everything here. And now I've got the point of my paper is down here. So I'm going to fold it over and that way my flowers won't drip when I deliver them. And sometimes it's quite annoying if you're being given a beautiful bunch of flowers at, a, at you know, say you take your valentine out on a hot date <laughs> i haven't got room to show you everything but with me standing up so i look as though i need the loo anyway if you fold i'm going to move you around so i can see, you can see what i'm doing that's better and look here's my coffee in a mug in a chelsea flower show mug given me by one of my club members last year thank you very much Anyway, if you fold over here, it stops drips, but it also means that if you're going to give the flowers and you, and you think they may not get into water for a little while, they've got, they, haven't, they won't dry out, the stems won't dry out. And then you just wrap around, and there you have a really simple, arrangement. I'm going to tie it, because otherwise it does this, with raffia, but you could use ribbon. I'm going to tie it with raffia, but you could use ribbon. And that is a really simple but really luxurious looking generous present always tie off the ends of the raffia because they look a bit wispy where are my snips oh here they are here are my snips. And there you have a really lovely, imagine, <laughs> I'm going to move you around, hello. Uh, imagine you are off to meet your Valentine, tripping over my buckets, and you appear like this with locally grown flowers for your valentine, no imports, it's not costing the earth, they're all at the same level, and then your valentine can take them home and arrange them in their own jug or vase or whatever. And I think that's a really lovely present. Won't drip because you've wrapped up the bottom. I'd say that was quite a picture. What a photograph. Uh, right, so that's idea number one. A total cost to you, maybe 25 30 pounds maximum but for real wow factor and they're going to last and last and they smell lovely so that is a very generous very simple way of offering your valentine flowers now i personally i'm going to be seeing my pal 
uh, the famous and very talented artist Katie James, who lives in Leafy Barns. I'm going to be seeing her on Valentine's Day. So, and I love her, and I want her to know how much I love her. So I may bring her something like this, as because she can be my Palantine. That chill me. So uh, Valentine's is not just an occasion to give flowers to your Valentine, but also your Palantine. Anyway, right, next idea. Let's make a bouquet, uh, because you might like to make a bouquet uh, with seasonal flowers that have not been flown across the world. Right, next up. Now I'm going to use the material I've just wrapped. And if you ask a florist to make a bouquet for you, the, one of the reasons it's gonna cost money is not just because they ha are including flowers that they've bought, especially for this process, but because it takes time and energy and a great deal of skill. If you would like to learn to make a hand tie like I'm making now, I have lots of workshops and demos online, do book yourself a, a session and I'll tell you how it really works. But in the short term, I'm just using some of this material. And just remember, when you order flowers, you are paying for the time, the expertise, and the creative eye of the florist. So that's one of the reasons they're expensive. So I'm not going to make anything too enormous, but you can see how mixing up the flowers a bit, and basically I'm doing the job that your Valentine, whoever they are, might quite enjoy doing themselves when they, if you gave them the sheaf of flowers that I, I did first, they might enjoy doing making their own arrangement. They might almost prefer it. It's a well-known fact that indulging your hand-eye coordination by making, work, working with fine motion, looking closely at the material you have is very good for your mental health. So it's possible that it's a good idea to give your Valentine flowers so that they can make their own arrangements. It is also the case that sometimes people are very busy and you want to make a sort of a great declaration, and in which case, then of course, go ahead and order a bouquet. If you're going to do a bouquet, it's worth planning in advance because then it'll be made especially for you. Look, oh, that's coming along quite nicely. But I haven't used anything like all the material which I had wrapped for my first first example and nor am I going to be able to because it's too much to fit in my hand. I could make a super duper enormous bouquet but um, I think it's worth doing something that are the sort of examples of things that you might be able to access yourself. Mustn't forget these lovely hyacinths Hyacinths are cut, you can see they've been cut out of the bulb because otherwise they're very short stemmed. So I'm pulling off to get just the simple stem. Coming along. 
when you order from your florist, they will know exactly, they'll give you a very specific idea of what they're going to put in their bouquets because they will have ordered up from their wholesalers so they know exactly what they're getting. Um, but, so if you do it yourself, you might be able to be a bit more creative and understandably it will cost you less because you're doing it yourself. Anyway, nice bouquet. Few more tulips. And I'm going to finish it up with a bit more foliage. And again, I've made sure that most of the material is at the same sort of level. There are a few bits sticking out because again, it's a presentation bouquet and somebody's going to look down on it and it'll be, they'll see the mass of flower heads and it'll look really fantastic. Let's have a little bit more greenery to frame it. I always love greenery. If anybody hasn't seen my clips before, um, I'm always, aren't I, those who've seen my clips before, I'm always very keen on my greenery. I love a bit of green. A bit more of this lovely Cornish heather. Look at that colour, isn't that pretty? I'm very... If you're giving flowers to your valentine, you do not have to give them red flowers. A, anything that's red for Valentine's Day is going to cost more because it's at a premium. But B, isn't this softer? Isn't that much prettier? In real life, red can be a very hard and flat colour, especially at this time of year in this light. It's rather, look, you can see, I don't have any electric light on and the light is very flat. So if you are planning to give flowers to your Valentine, I urge you, I gently encourage you to consider any colour other than red. Right, so there's a really nice, nice little bouquet. I'm going to tie it up. I always use raffia for tying. Simply tied. Let's take off the extra bits and I'm going to just tidy up the stems so that they they aren't, they're more or less the same length. And this one, because it might be delivered, uh, possibly, you know, Valentine's Day, it's very important that everything gets there early, you declare yourself. So it's possible that you'll have ordered it to be delivered or you may be being the florist yourself, in which case you might deliver it to work, your Valentine's work. So this I'm going to aquapack so that it's delivered with a reservoir of water. And you can order cellophane, which is made by plant-based plastic. If it's called cellophane, it's made with cellulose. So it is not, although, of course, to make a clear film out of any kind of cellulose, plant-based cellulose, there is a chemical firestorm that goes on to make it, but it is not an oil-based oil -based plastic if it's called cellophane. Like sellotape, you know that? Sellotape is made with a plant-based plastic. So... There's a lovely bouquet.
and I'm going to fill it with water from my sink. I'll turn you around so you can see the sink. And I'm <laughs> not very sophisticated. I'm tucking my bouquet under the tap and filling the cellophane up. And you could do this. And then the flowers have got at least a day, if not several, of water. Although I would recommend, obviously, it's much better to take all the packaging off, snip the stems to, to keep the flowers fresh, give them fresh water and put them in a vase as soon as you receive them. However, since flowers are often delivered to people at their workplace, that's not always convenient. So a cellophane bag like this called aqua packing works really nicely. However, you may not, you may prefer to not deliver like this, in which case, you could put your flowers in a little bag and you can, again, these are very readily, readily available to order online. And this is a hand tie bag or a posy bag. Do a little bit of research and you'll find out, find a supplier. They need folding out. I can't do it one handed. There's your bag, nice square bag. And voila, easy to deliver. So you could make something like that for your Valentine. There we are, that's option two. Now let's do option three. Right, idea three is to make your Valentine something very tiny and adorable. Now anybody, whoever, if, if your Valentine is somebody who uh, had a doll's house as a child or who likes small immaculate things, then this might be a really, really good idea. Again, anybody who likes large for the sake of large or valuable, expensive for the sake of expensive, not necessarily the person you want as your Valentine. Now, you could be really, really simple. Look, little tiny bunch of snowdrops. Snowdrops are out at this time of year and they have a tiny bit of a sweet scent so you could go into your garden and pull if you pull them you'll get more than if you cut them you get longer stems but for this little project you don't need very much and you could have a tiny little bunch of snowdrops you could Tie them up with a bit of raffia. I've, they're framed, and this is exactly how they came from my supplier. I will admit I didn't cut them myself. Um, these are Cornish snowdrops and a little bunch, look at that. I'm just wrapping them up. And again, this wrapping with raffia will mean that the liquid on the stems is kept. It's like having a little bit of a, a um, what's the word? Uh, they, it means that they've got a little bit of water to themselves. Get to the end, tie it off. Isn't that enchanting? That is a really, if somebody gave me that for my Valentine, I would read it, I'd marry them. <laughs> you could make more detail and you could turn this into a corsage. And put a pin through the back. And you could order yourself some little test tubes readily available online and when you give them it's overflowing you give them to your your valentine they don't have to put the corsage on but they think oh that's a bit complicated where am i going to put this hasn't got a flat bottom 
This is a tea light holder. So it's really, really simple. That could sit on somebody's desk and make the whole place smell delicious of honey. Or they could put it on and wear it. There we are. Right. Let's have another version of a similar sort of feel, only let's make it with a bit more material. We're going to have one tulip. A little bit of this gorgeous Cornish heather. You see how simple it could be? It could be that simple. Let's, but let's mix in with it. I want one ranunculus. One tulip, one ranunculus, little sprig of heather. And I love the silvery brachyglottis as a frame. And what you do, if you like, is if I tuck the brachyglottis underneath like this, it supports the hole really nicely. I'm going to snip it off, tie it up like I did the last one. I need better raffia. I get to tie it up like I did, like I did these ones. And that makes another sweet corsage. And the smaller the bunch that you make, the less the cost. The more detail, the more attention you pay, the more time you spend. It's not about the cost, it's about the thought. The more time you spend on your Valentine, the more the Valentine will appreciate how much you love them. I mean, as a Valentine's gift, I'm going to put the pin in the back. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? That's all you need. It's not about how much money you spend. It's not about red roses. It's about just be my Valentine. That's what you're asking. Not assuming that somebody will, but ask them, will you be my Valentine? Will you be my Palantine? Anyway, so there is another of these. Shall I put it on? <laughs> I'll wear it. And then I've got one more thing to make. It's a great look, this. There we are. I'm all flowery. So I could have made one, I could have made a, a corsage with lots of snowdrops. And look, that is a tiny bunch of snowdrops, one ranunculus, one tulip, one little sprig of Cornish heather, and one leaf of brachyglottis. Right, one more thing to go. Now I can hear you crying, but I want a heart. Let's have a heart. Well, I'm here to tell you that making hearts out of twigs is notoriously difficult. Um, there are lots of quite good examples on YouTube. So do have a look at other people's heart making out of twigs. Uh, I'm not going to take away from their glory. They will show you how to do it and 
you can see if you can make your own. I'm going to make three, this is the last thing you'll need. If you have three small jars, they don't have to be, these are mustard jars, uh, but you could, you could have jam jars, would do just as well. And I'm gonna make three posies and we'll make a heart out of three posies. It's very pretty. Now, remember, you don't have to go so far as this. Remember how lovely these will look wrapped in paper? So you don't have to fiddle around. But if you'd like to make three posies, which make a nice heart shape, you'll need ballparking. But I'm going to use nine stems each of the tulips, the ranunculus, the narcissi, one each of the hyacinths. They're very fat stems. And so there's not much room in my little jars, but also because you're going to put the posies together, there will be three together in the posies. I'm going to use this lovely Cornish heather as my foliage and they're going to be very pretty. So you want your posies to be about the same height as each other. And I would keep them quite short. So. Here's my little jar. I'm not going to, there's the height of the posy. I'm not going to have them very tall. Um, remember, bulbs grow in the vase. So the tulips, the hyacinth, are going to grow up as they mature, but it doesn't matter. I think they look lovely. I like. I like the movement of flowers as they grow. So I can count quickly and efficiently. I like if there are if there are nice buds with the ranunculus, I'll use the buds. If not, I won't. And it's three and three and three. So one, two. Three tulips, one, two, three narcissi, one only hyacinth, one, two, come on, three. Look how sweet that is. That's sweet. And that's three ranunculus, three tulips, three narcissi. And I'm going to just put a little bit of this lovely heather around the edge, collaring it. That's what I call it. There we are. Three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen stems. <gasps> if you're super, this you might be superstitious about thirteen. So let's put fifteen stems. I'll put a bit more of the, a bit more of the. Um, some people are very keen on thirteen these days, uh, but if you're asking someone to be your Valentine, maybe don't take any chances. That is a sweet little posy, if ever I saw one. Tie it up. Snip your ends off. Cut quite short because it's going in quite short bars. Look. And there's your first of the three. 
you see, if I want, if so, say I went to off my job, <laughs> I went to work. If I received something that little, I would be so happy because it wouldn't take up very much space on my desk. It's not difficult to take home. And it's just gorgeous and clearly didn't cost a million pounds, but it's so pretty. Right, I'm going to make two more and then we'll see how they look together. So there is a heart made of three posies put together. Very, very beautiful, though I say it myself. And if really, that would be a very, very good Valentine's gift for me if I were going to be given flowers on Valentine's Day, which oddly enough, I'm not. But whichever flowers you choose for your Valentine, please do consider anything that you can find locally grown rather than imported. And I personally much prefer pink to red at this time of year. So there we have four ideas of flowers that you could do, make, order for your Valentine or your Palantine just to tell someone you love them. That's what I think Valentine's Day should be. It's just a day when we can all tell someone. It's an opportunity for us to tell someone we love them. Katie, be my Palantine. <laughs> I'll see you on Tuesday. Um, anyway, uh, you could make something yourself. You could go for something really, really simple, but full of wow factor. You could go for something small. If somebody's at work and they don't want something big or they don't get, they've got to carry it home on the tube, do think about these things. Remember, it's not about how much you spend. It's not about how much of the earth you cost in declaring your love for somebody. It is the thought that counts. And all of these flowers are grown in England in February. So what can you get wherever you are in the world? Can you get some locally grown flowers? Do you have anything in the garden? Snowdrops? Little tiny iris reticulata? What have you got that could make a lovely thing to give your Valentine or your Palantine on Valentine's Day? Right, I hope you've enjoyed this clip. Um, and I hope you're inspired at least to ask if you could get locally grown flowers. I think we all assume, particularly look how dark it is in here. We assume that there is, there, there's nothing. Certainly here in, in the UK, there's a great deal of, oh, well, there are no flowers in the winter grown in the UK. Well, I'm here week after week after week to prove otherwise. There are flowers grown in the UK, UK all year round. Um, and just remember, if you order red, they'll cost you more. Whatever you choose at this time of year. Well, I might not. I expect I'll get loads of florists now making comments going, I don't charge anymore. I don't charge anymore. Um, but red is also quite flat in this light. Whereas, how's that for pretty? Anyway, thanks very much for coming along. I hope you're inspired, enabled, and going to go off and make something for your best pal, if not your Valentine. <laughs>